Yeah. Uh, basically, what I'll do is take one cause of chest pain at a time, describe the cause, as you should be able to clinically diagnose uh, neuropathy. Uh, the when we talk of chest pain, obviously the first thing that comes to mind is cardiac pain. And first, let us discuss cardiac pain. Uh, there are several types of pain due to myocardial ischemia or infarct. One pain is uh, chronic stable angina. I suppose uh, people know what chronic stable angina is. Chronic stable angina would be uh, decrease in coronary perfusion, which becomes apparent as chest pain only on exertion. Uh, so walking, climbing stairs. Uh, a little bit about chronic stable angina clinical feature. As you know, chronic stable angina is on walking or climbing stairs. When a patient says I have chest pain, and if he says it is on walking, uh, you must ask about whether the angina distance is decreasing over a period of time. What is angina distance? The distance at which angina occurs. So if he says that this pain is since three years, but now my angina distance, which used to be about 300 meters or four rounds of the jogger's park or three flights of stairs, is now only one flight of stairs or one round of jogger's park. This is called crescendo angina. Crescendo angina or angina which is angina. This falls into unstable angina category. Correct. So angina, if he says chronic stable angina, typically should be the angina distance should not be changing over a long, over a long period of time. Correct. The difference is that chronic stable angina, the angina distance is not changing, does not require aggressive intervention. Whereas crescendo angina, meaning worsening of uh, pain or decreasing of angina distance, requires angiography or free vascularization procedures. So. So when you take history, that is important. Another important thing about uh, knowing about chronic stable angina is this very typical thing. If a patient stays on the third floor, climbing three floors in his building, which he has always been climbing, will not cause angina. Whereas climbing two stories in another building will cause angina. It's very peculiar of angina. Okay. So if he says, I can climb three floors of my building, doesn't rule out angina. Something that is very used to somehow does not make his pain worse. So you must ask about unusual climbings. The top, in Mumbai city, for example, the commonest place where we ask for climbing discomfort is railway pool, bridge of railway stations, which are fairly long bridges, uh, steep bridges, lots of stairs. And most patients who will experience it in the first time will experience it on a railway bridge. Correct? Okay? or they will experience it at a hill station when they climb stole. So that is about chronic stable angina. Now we come to unstable angina. In unstable angina, there are three forms of unstable angina. One is unstable angina, which is crescendo angina, which I just spoke about. Second is angina at rest. It's called unstable angina. Angina at rest typically occurs when? Typically angina at rest occurs after meals. Okay. Post meal chest discomfort, which we or the patient might think of as gaseousness or dyspepsia, can be angina. I'll come to more of that later. But this rest pain can be after any exertions. Unstable angina obviously requires urgent evaluation, angiography, or admission sometimes. <coughs> the third, so there are two forms which I have discussed crescendo angina, which is not rest pain. Rest pain which is anginal rest pain and third form is recent onset angina. Unstable angina, the third form is recent onset angina. Any exertional angina which is just two months or less old is classified as unstable. Even if the patient says that I have to kill 4 rounds or 3 rounds or 3 rounds or 3 rounds still it will be classified as unstable if it is less than two months old. Can anybody tell me why? If I ask you, chest pain, tell me one place of radiation which will tell you, okay, this is my brain function. When a patient says that person chest pain, and in history, he gives you one place where the pain radiates to, which gives you the diagnosis as my brain function. Cannot be anything else. Which, what is that place of radiation? You understand what my question? Am I clear? 
So then left shoulder, is it classical? I mean, does it label it statical marking function? No. Which place will it radiate to? Which will tell you, okay, it's come here, which we need to do, see that's what I'll do. Chow, lower chow, okay? Chest pain, radiating to lower chow, is my right part. Okay? So, radiation can be from lower lip to umbilicus. That is the distribution of radiation of nerve infarction. In this area, one place it never radiates to. When you have a patient with chest pain, and it doesn't go there, it will not go there. It will not go there. It will not go there. Open the area. It will not go there. It will not go there. It will not go there. Anybody? Any guesses? Back of the neck. If the pain goes to back of the neck, it cannot be marked as marked. Chest pain with back of the neck and simultaneous cannot be marked as marked. So chest pain, back of the thorax, marked as marked goes away. Chest pain, anterior neck, marked as marked goes away. Upper abdomen, marked as marked goes away. But never back of the neck. Okay. So these two important things in the part. Relation to jaw, positive finding. Get in the back of the neck, negative. Right. So this is about this. Now let me talk about angina equivalent. Anybody know what is angina equivalent? So many patients will not get chest pain as a manifestation of chronic stable angina or as a manifestation of macular infarction. Diabetics, they have autonomic neuropathy, their pain sensations are numbed. So diabetics, for example, don't get chest pain frequently. COPD patients occasionally don't get chest pain if they have myocardial infarction. So in these patients, you will get angina equivalents. One equivalent is dyspnea. So when a patient says on climbing three floors, he gets breathless. This could be an angina equivalent. Now causes of breathlessness on climbing three floors are so many. Causes of chest pain, anterior chest pain on climbing three floors are very few. So, when dyspnea occurs, your diagnosis becomes more difficult. Correct? But dyspnea can be an angina equivalent. Another angina equivalent is sweating. Okay? When sweating occurs at rest, profuse sweating, but no chest pain, some breathlessness, it could be an infarct. Correct? So, sweating, consider it as an angina equivalent. In diabetics, sweating can occur also because of hypoglycemia. Okay? So, but sweating when it occurs, be careful of assessing the patient. So this is the concept of angina equivalence. Uh, crescendo angina is whenever the angina distance gradually decreases or the duration of angina increases. Jogger's Park, daily morning walk by a 75-year-old male. He used to get angina after four rounds. He used to stop for five minutes and walk again. Now he gets angina after two rounds, crescendo. Or he gets angina after four rounds only, but the chest pain lasts for 15 minutes instead of five minutes. Crescendo. This is crescendo angina. Crescendo angina means the narrowings are increasing either in numbers or in quantum, and hence the patient is getting problems.